Mandate insanity. Ooh, we're about to feel it now. We'll get to that in a second. And the election audit. Yikes. All that's coming up on I'm Right. Our expectation is, is that all health care workers in the state of New York will be vaccinated by Monday. What is looming for Monday is completely avoidable. And there's no excuses. Avoidable? No excuses? You know, I have to say, I agree with Governor Hochul. In case you're wondering, that's New York Governor Kathy Hochul. She's the one that stepped into the office after Governor Tentacle Fingers Cuomo got ushered out of the place. And now New York, the state of New York, one of the biggest, most important states in this country, they have a mandate for healthcare workers, a vaccine mandate. There are thousands of healthcare workers who do not want to get the vaccine. And let's be clear about something before we go into the rest of this. I realize not getting the vaccine has become the scarlet letter in this society. It is a perfectly reasonable position for you to choose not to get the vaccine. Whatever your reasons. Look, if you get it too, that's fine. I, I don't tell people to get it or not get it. I don't make your health care choices. There's plenty of reason out there to wait, to make a different choice. You want to get it? Go get it. You don't want to get it? That doesn't make you some bad person, some social pariah, somebody who doesn't care about health. There are a million reasons out there to say, no, I'm not getting it, or no, not yet, I'm going to wait and see, or no, don't think I have a significant risk factor, so I'm not getting it. There are a ton of very, very legitimate reasons for not getting it. Maybe you've already had coronavirus, and there's that thing called, what's it called? It starts with an N. Oh, natural immunity, that's right. That thing that existed for all of human history right up to the time COVID hit our shores, apparently. So, again, I want, to, I want you to play this. I want you to play Hochul one more time and the gall it takes to say this is avoidable. And what's she talking about this is avoidable? Well, effective now, New York officially is about to have a health care crisis. Our expectation is, is that all health care workers in the state of New York will be vaccinated by Monday. What is looming for Monday is completely avoidable and there's no excuses. She's right. It is avoidable and there are no excuses. What is looming for Monday? That would be today. Well, remember, it seems like it was just yesterday. COVID hit our shores and they told us we all had to go home for 15 days to slow the spread. But do you remember what 15 days to slow the spread was supposed to do? It was supposed to specifically prevent the hospitals from being overwhelmed. What an odd, ironic, sad world we live in that fast forward to about two years later, and because of our response to coronavirus, the hospitals will be overwhelmed. Not coronavirus. Coronavirus never overwhelmed. The hospitals are panicky, power hungry, stupid response to a virus is going to overwhelm the hospitals, and they know it. Wasn't that creepy? What's looming for Monday? She knows. She's been made aware. She knows if you go through with this vaccine mandate, you are going to have a severe shortage of healthcare workers. And I just, I, I want everyone to be clear on what that means. Because what happens is when you read news stories and when I read news stories, we tend to hit the high points or we bring up you know, talking points or statistics and, and we, we get really black and white about it, right? What does it mean to have a massive shortage of healthcare workers? It means mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, children. It means they're going to die, sometimes in hospital beds, sometimes sitting at home because there was nobody there at a medical facility to take them in and take care of their needs. It looks like a husband sitting at his wife's bedside saying goodbye. It looks like a parent holding their child. Yes, if this sounds sad and dark, it's because I want you to understand just how vicious and evil these vaccine mandates are. And they're passing these mandates 
and they know. They know about the husband sitting at his wife's bedside. They know about the parent clutching their child, and they didn't bat an eye. They don't care. What's New York planning? Well, this is this would go well. They're planning to bring in health care professionals from other states, as if other states have this massive surplus of health care professionals, and other countries, as well as retirees. We're going to dig grandpa up and bring him into the hospitals. Another option, they might deploy their medically trained National Guard. <clears throat> um, yeah, if all that sounds like putting a Band-Aid over a massive gaping chest wound, that's exactly what it is. We don't have this huge surplus of healthcare workers from other states. That's one. Two, I don't think digging up 75-year-old doctor guy who was practicing medicine back when Nixon was in office is going to supplant the young, vibrant healthcare workers you're currently losing. And lastly, the National Guard? How long are you going to deploy the National Guard in hospitals? Well, should be noted these horrible doomsday disgusting scenarios it's not just healthcare workers i want you to imagine something just walk me through this <clears throat> i want you to imagine tonight go to bed say goodbye to the spouse say goodnight to the spouse tuck your kiddos in lay your head down about 1 a.m you wake up to the sound of glass shattering by your front door you go look, and you can actually see somebody's arm reaching in, trying to get the front door unlocked and open. You already see they have a weapon in their hands in the dark. Picture how scared you are at that moment. Now, I want you to picture this. I want you to picture you pick, run to your room as you would, wake your wife up, hopefully tell her to go hide in the closet, Lord willing, tell her to go grab a weapon, and you quickly call the cops and the cops say, ooh, man, okay, that sounds like an emergency. I am sorry, we don't have any officers to send at this time. We will get someone as soon as we have somebody. Because that's what happens, that's what's going to be happening in these vaccine-mandated places across the country. You see, while people are getting fired for their freedoms in New York, dozens of troopers have already quit in Massachusetts after a vaccine mandate. And this goes way beyond Massachusetts, I should say. I just pointed this one out. This was in response to a Republican governor's vaccine mandate. Every single industry that gets hit with a vaccine mandate, they're going to suffer. They are going to suffer. And people are going to suffer. Health is going to suffer. Safety is going to suffer. Food supplies are going to suffer. Have you thought about that yet? Have you thought about the large food manufacturers losing 20, 30 percent of their workforce? Have you thought about the large trucking companies? Have you thought about the airlines? Have you thought this through? I don't know that they have, and I don't know what, what would worry me more if they haven't thought it through or they did and they're okay with these results. And remember, all this stuff now, it stopped being about coronavirus about 15 minutes after it got here. This is all about power and money and control. Even if 100% of the country got vaccinated tomorrow, you know what would change? Nothing. They don't care about coronavirus. They care about taking all the power they've ever wanted. They care about making a bunch of money off of your fear. Here's the CEO of Pfizer. Enjoy this little tidbit. The most likely scenario for me it is that because the virus is spread all over the world, that we will continue seeing uh, new variants that are coming out, and also we will have uh, vaccines that uh, they will last at least a year. And uh, I think the most likely scenario is annual revaccinations, but we don't know really. We need to wait and see the date. Of course. Just look, annual vaccinations. Well, I don't. Uh... I hope you're not accusing the CEO of the company producing the vaccinations of having a conflict of interest when you, when you hear him say, you need one every year, right? Oh, by the way, quick note, you better watch I'm Right every single day or you'll die. No, I'm not self-interested. What, what do you mean? <laughs> but it's about the public health, right? About the public health. Here's a little video of a woman in Australia. Guess what her sin was? Not wearing a mask. Yes, that's right. 
Some six foot four police officer wrapping his hands around the throat of a woman, choking her and slamming her up against a brick wall because she didn't wear a mask. It's definitely about the public health, isn't it? It's not about power and money and control at all, right? Here's a public health official in Australia saying the quiet part out loud, we're never going back. I stress, we will not be ever having to go back to pre-COVID levels. We always gonna have to be mindful that COVID exists. We're gonna have to engage with booster shots. We're gonna have to engage with advice from time to time when we see outbreaks. We're gonna have to respond. So it's, it's not gonna go back to normal. We can't deny that we're gonna have to live with COVID. Um, but having those very high vaccination levels will allow us to have more minimal restrictions or more minimal um, public health measures in place as we, as we navigate the future years with COVID. We're never going back to normal. I don't care how many vaccinations you get, booster shots you get. Remember, all these people are loving this. They're loving this. All the people abusing you, they love coronavirus. Here's Australia's PM. He's just pulling numbers out of the air because that's what they do. Everyone just lies now. Do you think less liberty is medically necessary? We have a huge argument over that in this country. Why did you think it was worth it in Australia? 30,000 lives is the simple answer. 30,000 lives. That's weird because I just looked this up and yeah, there's no explanation for that at all. Remember this remind you know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of uh, Barack Obama's stimulus bill back in the day. Save or create two million jobs, and no one actually dug into what does that mean? Save and create what are you talking what? That doesn't sound measurable at all. Of course nothing's measurable. We saved fifty thousand lives. This is what happens when you get horrible, divisive, power hungry people in charge. I mean, how's it going in Canada, just right up north? Well, here. If individuals choose to not get tested for COVID but are home with an illness, um, they're now counted in the list as uh, being part of that outbreak. Hmm. I'm sorry, what? That almost sounded like we're just going to count everybody who stays home sick as being a COVID case which, of course, will result in the reporting of many, many, many new cases, which will, of course, result in more lockdowns. It's weird how everything seems to serve only to justify more control, more money, more power. That's so odd. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, Jess, yeah, that's Australia. That's Canada. I mean, nothing's going to happen here I want you to listen to this tyrannical monster as he stands up in front of the American people and says, there's the dirty minority responsible for everything. Three quarters of the eligible have gotten at least one shot, but one quarter has not gotten any. And in a country as large as ours, that's 25% minority can cause an awful lot of damage and they are causing a lot of damage. The unvaccinated overcrowd our hospitals. The unvaccinated also put our economy at risk, recovery at risk, causing unease in the economy around the, and uh, causing unease around the kitchen table. That's how monsters talk. I'm not trying to be over the top. That kind of language is exactly how every single genocide in history has begun. And don't say this. That's crazy, Jesse. Yeah, this is nothing like genocide. What are you talking about? Every single person who died in a genocide would have said just exactly what you're saying in the very beginning of it. You ever, you ever read the stories of the people who've gone through them? There's, they've happened all over the world. It always starts, always starts kind of benign. Oh, okay, it's a little uncomfortable. Wow, they're taking this group of people and they're blaming them for... All of society's problems. Oh, but we're not doing much to them yet. Okay, we're starting to hurt them a little. They're picking up the rhetoric. And this is how it builds and how it builds and how it builds. And that is the president of the United States of America. Frightening times we live in. Don't you dare be peer pressured by anybody. 
Don't be pressured by your job. Don't be pressured by your relatives. Don't be pressured by the news or the president or anybody else. You go be free. You go live your life exactly the way you want to live it. Raise your kids the, exactly the way you want to live them. And you fight back against these monsters every chance you get. All that may have made you uncomfortable, but I'm right. Now, we have a great show for you tonight, but first, what's your holster situation like? How's your gear? Did you grab your gear right off the shelf of the big box hunting store, or have you gone to Northwest Retention Systems yet? Have you dug into their custom-made gear? All of it custom-made right here in America, I might point out. I've had a lot of gear in my lifetime, both in the Marine Corps and after. I've never had gear this quality in my life. You can tell the time they put into it. And if you're a style person, the designs are as cool as they come. Go to nwretention.com. That's nwretention.com. Use the promo code JESSE. That'll get you 10% off. We got a great show for you tonight. We'll be back. Pride goeth before the fall. I read that somewhere once. Oh, yeah. That was the word of God. And what was he talking about? Well, I'm not going to put words in God's mouth, but how damaging is pride? Pride. People can't ever seem to swallow their pride. Costs lives, costs nations. What am I talking about right now? Well, I remember when the election happened and there was a bunch of odd looking things that happened during that election. Election uh, votes flooding in after midnight, giving Biden the win. And there was just so much, so much that looked wrong. It looked so wrong. And yet immediately after the election, we had... Everyone on the left, of course, declaring the best election ever, the most secure ever. And like 95% of the politicians and pundits on the right immediately going, yeah, yeah, best election ever. What? We don't know that. We don't know anything. We, we need to watch. We need to wait. We need to investigate. We need to see. Now, why am I bringing this up? Because they just completed an election audit in Arizona. Remember, Biden won that state by like 10,000 votes. And these numbers cannot be explained away. They found 49,000 questionable votes. 49,000. Look at this screen. I want you to look at this thing. I want you to look at these numbers right now. Over 23,000 votes came in from people who were no longer living at the address to which their mail-in ballot was sent. That's funny. There were more, there were uh, 9,000 more ballots being returned by voters than received. Hold on, hold on, wait a minute. 9,000 more votes being returned than were received. Hmm. 5,000 plus voters potentially voting in multiple counties. In multiple counties. Okay, so what, what, what did I bring up pride? What am I talking about here? If you're one of those people... TV, radio host, big writing platform, politician, maybe senator, congressman, and you did the thing that you always do in the GOP, and you did, okay, we have to say what they're saying or they'll be mean to us, and you said, safest election ever. Don't be a conspiracy theorist. You must look at these results, and we have to talk about them. You must swallow your pride Maybe you look dumb right now. Okay, not the end of the world. I've looked dumb a hundred times in my life. Swallow your pride and let's look at these results. Maybe there is an explanation. No one seems to be offering one, though. This was a state that was razor thin. And there are tens of thousands of questionable ballots. I'm not saying I know something. I'm saying if this thing doesn't prompt you to change your tune and start asking real questions, well, pride goeth before the fall. If we're not going to be humble enough to step back when we get results that are shocking, then we're never going to make it. We're simply never going to save this country. We're never going to make it. Trump had a rally over the weekend. As you can imagine, he had things to say are fake news and a very big lie. You know, they like to... Do you ever notice when they write about that, they always say, 
While the election results are a big lie, every reporter, it's like, it's like, it's just total misinformation. While they're totally unfounded, everything's unfounded, big lie, not correct. While Trump has no reason to say this, I mean, we get piles and piles of information, affidavits by the thousands and thousands. It's a disgrace. Doesn't look so crazy anymore, does it? If you're one of the people who took perhaps the wrong route early, be humble enough to step up and say, okay, we need answers now, because this audit is really bad. All right. We got Dave Bratt coming up next to talk about Wall Street and the CIA and whatnot. But first, I was tempted to have a dip over the weekend. Look, I don't deny it. I dipped for years before I joined the Marines, during the Marines, of course, after the Marines. I loved it. Knew I had to quit, but I loved it. So I still get cravings. What do I do? I reach for Jake's Mint Chew. If you're trying to quit, reach for Jake's Mint Chew. If you have quit and you get tempted, reach for Jake's Mint Chew. 11 different flavors of long cut, four different flavors of the CBD pouches, which I really love. They really take the edge off, plus they're nice and clean. I can have that dip, but it's tobacco free. It's nicotine free. It's even sugar free. I can have that dip from Jake's Mint Chew guilt free. Go to jakesmintchew.com. Use the promo code JESSE for 10% off. We'll be right back with Dave Brett. The people we're dealing with are evil and angry and destroying our country. They're destroying our country. And they want to go after me because I have, they think, a big mouth. I don't have a big mouth. You know what I have? I have a mouth that tells the truth. Joining me now, Dean of Business at Liberty University, former Congressman Dave Bratt needs no introduction on this show. Congressman, let's talk about Trump for a moment before we get to all the Wall Street stuff and the populist stuff and whatnot. Trump appears to me, maybe it's just my eyes, to be picking up steam. He is, although I never thought he was going to, he looks like a man, maybe running for president again, and was a fan of the Trump agenda, thought he did very, very well. I also think it's time for something different. Where do you stand, Dave? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm kind of with you. A few months ago, I didn't think uh, he was going to run again. Uh, the family being trapped in the White House, et cetera, and just uh, he didn't seem all in. But lately, with the news starting to break on Arizona and some of the stuff coming out, uh, and then, you know, him just seeing the state of the country, I, I do get the sense that uh, his energy's way up. And uh, I, I think uh, he was right right there uh, when he said, uh, you know, I tell the truth. And it, it's hard to tell this to the American people. My own suburbs in Virginia, we'll see in the governor's race coming up shortly this year, uh, whether they've changed, but I don't think they have yet. I don't think the suburbs have changed. But you know, there comes a day when you got to say, hey, when the FBI is proven to be corrupt and the CIA, which is had right by liberals admissions, right? We got uh, Glenn and some other good liberals out there that have traced the actions of the CIA over the 50 years. They're totally corrupt uh, now and have been. And you have Russia Gate and just this litany of, of terrible behavior and actions and vocabulary coming out of the left and then riots in the streets and et cetera. And so uh, we'll see. I, I, I think if, if some of these states, if the evidence turns in some of these states uh, and he gets the sense uh, that that last thing was closer than uh, everyone's been saying in the, in the mainstream media, boy, you know, that, that, uh, that changes the calculation. Dave, I'm, I'm glad you brought up this. Let's focus on this for a moment, the Arizona audit. Now, I realize that nobody, who, especially who resi resides within the Washington, D.C. Beltway, wants to be the icky question the election guy, even everyone on the right back there. It's the fairest election ever, but Dave, how do you explain this stuff away? And I've always been wait and see. I was never the election was stolen guy. I was yeah. never, I'm not touching a guy. I just want to wait and see. Yeah, Dave, I've dug into this. How do you explain this away? Well, they, it, it's the same 
uh, they did uh, just for the average listener out there that you were trying to you know tug over to rationality. They said RussiaGate for a full on year. Right. And they said there's no way the uh, virus came from a Chinese lab for a full on year. Right. I mean, just just so we get the facts in our head. Right. They lied to you for a year uh, on, on these major. These are not small, insignificant things. The FBI, the CIA, the, the WHO, the World Health Institute, everybody lied to you straight on. And so now we're getting some information on the ballots. And I think you need 15 or 20 to overturn uh, to overturn uh, Arizona. And Woodward came out the other day and said you need 40,000 votes to overturn three states. That's from Bob Woodward, right? So uh, when he's saying it, okay, let's take that as a baseline. And then you got those numbers up there that show you know upwards of 50,000 votes. Uh, and the mainstream uh, press keeps saying we we. We re-ran the votes. We we know that. Okay, we, we're we're all intelligent. We ran, you you re-ran the same votes, and you got the same thing about about. Uh, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about the votes that were cast that were illegal. That's an audit. That's that's not just recounting the same old vote, right? So when you go to audit, there's several categories there of, of paper that doesn't match up at all. They they were never sent in in the mail. Uh, there are people that don't live at the addresses. Uh, in addition to all the mail-in ballot issues, there's several huge categories across all the states. I think Arizona is one of the tighter, you know, 50, 50,000 votes to, to get to 20. Uh, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, some of the others are much larger votes in question. Uh, and so we'll see, right? That's that's what the, the average voter is waiting to see that evidence, and it it is coming out. And then the next step in Arizona will be, do they uh, decertify, right? That'll be your, does one state decertify? If that happens, oh boy, that's, then that's news. You can't hide that one. Where do we go from there? What if Arizona wakes up tomorrow and they certainly could with this evidence and they de decertify the election? I, I, where does that leave us? Right, no, that's, uh, that's over my pay grade, but uh, it leads you to the next state and the left, you know what, they're just gonna say, Oh, Arizona, there's these talking heads that have, you know, are trying to lead you down a thing. Okay, so so one state wants to decertify. What what do you do? It's not like we're, you know, a, a republic or anything, uh, you know, where states matter. And so, yeah, then it'll go to the next state. And uh, if you get to the third, uh, then you're at the key number that Woodward mentioned. And then it then it's on to the, the question you asked. Then what do we do? Because I don't think we've ever been there. So that that's the biggie. Dave, I, I have to ask, because you brought the, them up earlier, CIA, FBI. Yeah. I, there are a few things that are more dangerous, in my opinion, than CIA, FBI becoming highly politicized yeah. enforcement arms for the National Democratic Party. I mean, it's yeah. one thing for the loser on CNN to be a partisan communist hack, whatever he is what he is. The FBI has the power tomorrow, if they so desire, to destroy my life. Rightly or wrongly, they do, yep. and anyone else's life. Yep. And it seems like they're almost connected with Wall Street and the media and everyone else. What am I supposed to make of this? It's a very scary situation. No, it, it, it's a problem. I mean, uh, you know, the, the state, the definition for the, the modern nation state is the entity which has a monopoly on violence, right? That's what a nation state is in its essence. That goes back to... Clausewitz and all that. And the CIA and the FBI are the, are the part of the state that can determine who the good guys and who the bad guys are. And so when you have them for a year going off on this Russia thing, knowing full well it's a lie, uh, you're right. And then they have your information, uh, head to toe, everything about you. They know everything about every firm, the, about every international transaction. Now Congress is making a bill. If you get anything more than $600, uh, you get tracked to the IRS or something like that, going through the House right now in the new budget bill. They can track all that. So, and, and, and this is not to, to, to denigrate uh, the, the men and women who serve, right? I, I, I knew several super FBI friends personally uh, back when I was congressman. They, they uh, have given their lives to the country. Uh, but the leadership has shown and the talking points coming out of the institutions themselves at the highest level has been corrupted. And when those agencies are corrupted, you're right, there's nothing scarier than that. And it appears uh, that they have coordinated messaging with the New York Times, 
uh, with the Wall Street globalist elites. Uh, and that group has basically uh, planned uh, and is okay with the, the ascendance of China and uh, the, the, the reduction of our place in the world as the United States of America. And that, it, 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 you know, it's called a managed decline uh, by these elites. It's okay. And they're making billions of dollars, right? Uh, it, it, trading with the, the Chinese who are still growing relatively faster than we are. Uh, and so that's what's in play. And all of it is at the expense of the American people, right? You, you would think the people in Detroit would know by now, right? Like my suburban voters who just don't get it. With, with this, this, this planned decline when we outsource all the jobs instead of our corporate titans taking the supply chains away from China and putting them back in Detroit so we get the high paying jobs again. All the evidence is in, the left has decimated and the conservatives are in on this too somewhat, right? I don't want to give them a blank check. Uh, they've all been in it, uh, making sweetheart deals uh, with the global elites to enrich themselves uh, while the American people get poorer and poorer and poorer. And we keep de-incentivizing, giving them checks uh, because the last thing anyone wants to do right now is to work. That's the only thing that will get us out of this debt trap, right? 28 trillion in debt. We're going to add another 10 trillion. The only thing that gets you out of that debt trap for real is hard work uh, and productivity and then GDP growth, right? That that will save the day, but it doesn't appear we have any intention of telling our kids that work is a noble uh, thing, uh, you know, ordained by God uh, and that, that we all need to play our part in saving this country. That, that seems to be the last thing we're telling the kids. Wow. Dave, Brad, thank you so much, Dave. I appreciate you, man. Hey, you too, Jesse. God bless. Thanks. All right. Robbie Starbuck joins us next. Hang on. You want to flip homes? You ever thought about flipping homes? It's pretty cool, right? I'm sure you've seen the TV shows where they walk into this house and they say, we can improve this and improve that. And after we bought it for this, we can make a little cheddar selling it for that. And it looks cool, right? But it's overwhelming because you're not an expert. Where do you even find vendors? Where do you find flipping opportunities? Where do you find reading materials so you can learn how the experts do it? Oh, wait. I know. FlippingMadeEasy.com. FlippingMadeEasy.com is one of the coolest concepts I've heard in so long. I was so excited when I found out about it. It takes everything you need, everything you need if you want to start flipping homes from scratch, if you don't know anything about it. Just go to FlippingMadeEasy.com. It's all laid out for you. Get a Platinum membership and use the promo code JESSE, and you'll get an extra special gift with it, too. FlippingMadeEasy.com, promo code JESSE. Enjoy. Of the 17,400 that weren't deported back or didn't return on their own to Mexico, how many of them either, ha well, first, how many have been released into the U.S.? Uh, they're released on conditions, yes. and, and uh, approximately, I think it's about 10,000 or so, 12,000. Have been released? Yes. And of the 5,000 that are still in process? We will uh, make determinations whether they will be uh, returned uh, to uh, Haiti uh, based on our public health and public interest uh, authorities. So are we talking about a total of 12,000 or could it be even higher? It could uh, it could be even higher. Okay. I know there's a lot to unpack there as we get to my friend, director and producer Robbie Starbuck running for Congress in Tennessee. I hope you support him. But uh, Robbie, there's a million things we can unpack from this. But I think the fact the DHS secretary seems to not know critical information you would think the DHS secretary should know. For instance, how many illegals we just flooded the country with? Yeah, I think that that's pretty concerning, you know, and the truth is we all know that they know, you know, if anything, they yeah. may have, you know, sort of a rough estimate that they know, and he's not able to even give or confirm that. And that should tell everybody a whole lot about the situation. Meanwhile, you know, they've still been trying to control for immigration from Cuba because, God forbid, we let in anybody who would vote Republican. 
Yeah, I mean, Robbie, what is the explanation from the administration for that? I mean, we did have a bunch of freedom fighters in Cuba, and the administration not only didn't let them in, they publicly went on TV and said, don't bother coming, and yet everyone else said, throw open the doors. Yeah, it was the most forceful they've ever been about immigration. They're like, absolutely not. We will not have this. This will not stand. And the truth is, number one, they're protecting the Cuban government, but number two, it's just simple raw politics. They know that the Cubans are more likely to vote Republican by a long shot. I mean, we're probably the most conservative block of voters in the country. Um, but outside of that, you know, you look at everything happening down in Mexico and coming through the Mexican border there, it's very clear this is also about politics. This is about votes in the future. You know, we're talking about tens of millions of people in our country illegally who will then become voters and will become high propensity voters to vote Democrat, you know, at least in the short term. And so that's their whole calculation here. And the reality of the situation is here, I wanna show you something. This is a shoe I brought back from the border, okay? This, um, this is a little kid's shoe. And I brought it to make very clear, this pain and suffering of these children, this was found under a tree, okay? In these, in these places, I don't know if you've ever heard of rape trees, okay? Traffickers take women and children and will rape them under these trees and leave souvenirs there, okay? Border Patrol told me all about it. It's the most horrific stuff you could ever imagine. And the truth is the Democrats, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, they don't care that that's the cost of those raw votes in the future. It's worth anything to them. So they're okay with leaving our border open and exposed as long as they get what they want in the end. And to tell you the truth, I think that's the real reason why we haven't seen Kamala go down to the border and why Joe Biden has never gone in his career because they don't want to see the reality on the ground. They don't want to face the pain and suffering that they cause with their open border policies. And it's why we went down to the border and had this rally in March, because we wanted to make it explicitly clear that there is a price to these policies. And that at the end of the day, the morality they preached from pretending that it's immoral to have borders. No, it actually, we can flip that on its face. It's immoral to have open borders. This is the cost. These children, lost children, who we don't know where they go, the sex traffic and labor trafficked human beings who are exploited on a daily basis. That's the cost. And it's inhumane to allow it to continue. And so we have to shut that border down. Robbie, I want to, you brought up Kamala and I want to, I want to play this video of her on The View. It is just, it's, it's not stunning that people lie. It's stunning how lies now can be invented out of thin air and people at the highest levels of all our cultural institutions run, run with them. Like this video about the whip. First of all, I've been very clear about the images that you and I both saw of those law enforcement officials on horses. I, I, I was outraged by it. I, it was horrible and, um, and, and deeply troubling. There's been now an investigation that is being conducted, which I fully support, and there needs to be consequence and accountability. Uh, they, human beings should not be treated that way, and as we all know, it also evoked images of some of the worst moments of our history, where that kind of behavior has been used against the indigenous people of our country, has been used against African Americans during times of slavery. And um, so I'm glad to, to know that, that Ali Mayorkas, the Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security, is taking it very seriously. Robbie, did you know basic border enforcement is just like what happened to the Indians and the slaves? These people are so dumb. How many people in this society actually buy that hogwash they're selling? I hope it's a very small group. I mean, an even better video, there was one of Mayorkas uh, Jake Tapper even on CNN was like, hey, um, they didn't whip people. What What is the deal here? Why are you guys going along with this narrative? And he said, well, these images, you know, people thought that they saw something. And that's what's really important is they thought, no, I'm sorry, your mass psychosis is not what matters. OK, just because you guys are all losing your minds. That's not where we build policy from. OK, and let me tell you, I went down to the border and I talked just a couple days ago to all Latino border officers, okay, border agents, and all of them were outraged by the way they've been treated with the horses and the so-called whips. Uh, for people who have never ridden horses before, their reins, they are not used to whip people. And even the photographer who was down there said that he didn't see anybody getting whipped or anything along those lines. This is a critical tool for our border agents to be able to use in sectors where there is not an easy way to take a vehicle or anything like that. And in fact, they know 
that the cartels are planning to exploit this if there are not horses on the border with those agents to be able to go and patrol those areas. So again, another example of them allowing psychosis to get in the way of good policy and in the end will end up costing lives of American citizens. This is not some small thing. More drugs will be trafficked, more humans will be trafficked in the holes that are created by not having these areas of the border patrolled. Robbie, I I'm sure your congressional area in Tennessee cares, but the nation as a whole, do they actually care? I, I mean, I I'm so floored by this. If you just take a step back, we just had 14,000 people from another nation amass on our border trying to get in. Any other country in the history of the world would send an army to stop an invasion like that. We just simply let them all in because of some bad pictures. How can we survive this? Are the American people aware of how damaging this is? You know, not enough people care. I'm going to be really honest. I wish I could give you a different answer. I'm not going to give you a politician answer. Not enough people care. Um, they just don't. And you know what? This isn't just Biden and Kamala to blame. I'm going to blame Governor Abbott, too, because, you know, he has the power. I know what I would do as Texas governor, and I would be deploying, and I would even be considering deputizing citizens if necessary to ensure that we had enforcement on the border and that our border agents had the help they need. I think that, you know, the reality is immigration without assimilation, you know, leads to annihilation. And this is essentially, this isn't even immigration properly. This is just an invasion. And if you don't protect your country, you don't protect your borders, you don't have a country. The reality is under this administration, we are all border states. And so I am disheartened that not more people care enough to rise up and say, you know what, not in our country, because this is going to have a long-term cost for our children and grandchildren, we may not recognize the country of the future. And I'm saying this is a Latino. This is not a race-based thing. This is about cultures. This is about controlling for our economic freedom and our economic future. If we don't do this intelligently, then we are doing something high, very immoral, in my opinion, to our own children, grandchildren, and to the people who are drug onto this dangerous journey where horrific things happen to them. And we've got to change the way we message on this issue to reach people. And I think part of that is going to start with saying, you know what? No, the Democrats don't have the moral high ground here. Their policies allow people to be raped and trafficked at record levels. And I think that's kind of a starting point for getting maybe some of the people engaged who haven't been. Robbie, why don't more Republicans do something about it? I, the, the weakness of this and stupidity of this party absolutely blows me away. Why don't they do something about it? You brought up Greg Abbott. I'm in the state of Texas. Every Republican I know is screaming at him, do something, and yet nothing. Well, you know, I think the truth of it is we're in a state of great transition in our, our party. You know, we have this sort of like past era of the Romney-esque corporate raiders they really don't care that much about the issues that we care about, that the base cares about. And then you have a new emerging class of people, you know, like myself running for Congress, who we are at our core about the people and about the people's issues. And so for people like me, it's unthinkable to just, you know, allow this sort of thing to happen. The truth is, you know, this older school class of politician, they spend more time talking to corporate donors than they do to people who vote for them. And that's a real problem. And so the people do have a responsibility to hold these people accountable. You know, um, they've got to understand that if you really want change, you're going to have to get more active than you ever have been in your life, volunteering, donating to candidates who are actually going to fight for you and actually going to fight for the people's issues. It can't just be Trump. It can't just be on that top ticket. You've got to go all the way down supporting fighters. Amen. Robbie, Starbuck, everybody go support him if you can. Thank you, Robbie. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you. Appreciate you, too. Starbuck2022.com. Starbuck2022.com. All right. We got Light in the Mood. Next. All right. That's enough of the heavy today. Let us file a missing persons report for this person. Stuck. You're not I'm stuck. Still. You're fine. I'm you're really fine. Small. Just nope. Just slowly climb down, and you'll be fine. Slowly climb down. You're fine. Just slowly climb down. Okay. There you go. You got it. You're not gonna fall. You're not gonna fall. You're not gonna fall. I don't like it. <laughs> Where did she go? She's gone. Where did? She... That guy's in so much trouble later. All right, I'll see you tomorrow.